Hi everybody, welcome to another one of my economics videos. So today I'm going to be covering off on something that I covered off in one of my earlier videos, and that is looking at time and looking at how we value time. So in the previous video I covered it off in terms of time versus quantity. This time I'm not going to make so much of the comparison to the quantity side of it and the dollar side of that, but I'm going to be mostly focusing around time and what that actually means and how we actually spend our time. And it'd be covering off um, in terms of looking at in terms of a week, how we spend our time with the week, the weekdays versus the weekends, and also some of the activities that we get involved with and maybe give you a little bit of a different perspective in terms of how we actually make use of our time and how we approach that. So let's first of all look at work. I know most of us work, most of us and either we go out and work in the workforce we earn money or whether we do work in the home or or so on, but Normally, work isn't considered the most enjoyable thing in our lives. Some people like their work a lot more than others. Some people really like it. Some people really hate it. But generally, most people find that there's activities in their lives that they'd rather be doing than actually working. So I'm going to take work as basically you're sacrificing time in order to enhance the time that you're actually out of work. As in, not to say actually out of a job, but in terms of you're, without your, you know, let's say you spend 40 hours a week in your job. So those 40 hours, you earn money, and that money can go towards enhancing the remaining hours outside of work. Again, of course, you've got to take out time you need to sleep and do all other stuff as well. So it's a lot of time to be focusing maybe on holidays and weekends. So taking work, in a sense, as that's what you're sacrificing, but we're still going to assign a level of utility to that, and I'll cover off what I mean by that in a minute. So, what do we enjoy doing? There's lots of things in life that people enjoy. You know, very, very different from person to person. So you've got here in the picture, I think this is a, a 3D cinema or a 4D cinema. You sit in one of those moving chairs, you've got the 3D glasses and stuff and all that. That's, I've been in one of those on a cruise ship and all that. It's a lot of fun, I enjoyed it. It's, they're generally fairly short videos, short movies that are played and can cost a bit of money. So in terms of time spent and money going out, You'd have to really, really enjoy these type of movies in order to do it. And in most cases, it is a little bit of a novelty as well. So maybe you compare it with just going to the cinema, for example, which you'd be in there for maybe about two hours, and you might be spending around ten plus dollars on a ticket or something like that. But then again, you'd be adding other stuff as well, whether you're getting drinks and popcorn and however you want to enhance your experience. And another thing, you people could be looking at maybe fairly inexpensive uses of their time, like for example, going to a picnic in a park. So you have free access to the park and the picnic items, you're kind of using things that you have at home. I know that costs money as well, but it's stuff that, well, may have got wasted otherwise. So you could have a fairly low cost outing and enjoyment. Again, it really depends on a personal, personal uh, experience. People experience things differently and experience time differently. Okay, so that's what I bring to my next point. It comes to how we manage our time. So whether you're talking about you know, a five-day work week and making most out of your weekends, or maybe a four-day work week, or maybe you're working part-time, or you could be working shifts or whatever. But those jobs, whatever, are bringing in money, and you use that money to enhance your time outside of your work. So how do you get the most out of that? So it's not necessarily look at things in terms of dollars. I'd like to move off of that. But look at it in terms of how you spend your time. And earning dollars, earning money at a job, you can actually look at that as sacrifice time. More so than actual money in itself. And that sacrifice, I guess, is bigger if you're not earning much money per hour. So it will vary, depending. Alright, so we've got a few questions here that we need to ask ourselves. So how much do you enjoy the work that you do? And that's quite an important question because... People spend, like I say, it could be up 40 hours or even more in a workplace in a week. So that's quite a significant amount of time. And then there's also the traveling backwards and forwards. You may be adding on maybe another 10 hours of travel a week. So you're looking at about work-related, it could be around 50 plus hours. So enjoyment of your job is, is a fairly important thing. And that needs to factor in in terms of what job you select. So how much time do you spend at work? So I mentioned about, you know, 40 hours, maybe 50 hours. Some people could be more. Some people are working 80 hour jobs. Some people may be only working part-time. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. And also what hourly rate you're actually earning as well. So if you look at in terms of labor economics, they've got a theory. I'm not going to cover that today. It's called the backward bending uh, labor curve. So once you get to a certain amount of pay, 
you don't want to work more hours. In fact, you actually work less hours, but that will be for a topic for another day anyway. Also, another thing is, um, well, what are you really passionate about in life? And does your job that you're doing, does, does that get in the way of what you're passionate? Does it take up too much time so you can't do what you're passionate about? Or does it actually enhance you in the sense you may be passionate about something that costs quite a lot of money? So you need to work to earn that money to do what you're passionate about. So it's, a, it's an interesting balancing act. So before I go any further, I'm going to talk about utility. This is a concept I've talked about in a few of my videos. I just want to cover it again, just in case some of you haven't seen those videos where I talk about utility. Utility, in short, is the, the level of satisfaction that you gain out of any activity. So, just like I mentioned, you would probably enjoy one hour in the cinema more than you enjoy one hour at work. So you get higher level utility out of spending that time in the cinema, for example. And it works with a number of other things as well. So, it's the same with food, you know, certain foods can give you more utility than other foods. So junk food may not give you much utility because you don't... You get it because it's cheap and it's convenient, but it may not taste particularly nice. Compared to dining at maybe more of a fine restaurant that has nice quality food, and maybe it's got nice music, nice seating, and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, let's go to an example now. I've got two examples on this. So in terms of your daily activity, so what I've done is I've broken the daily activity down into, I think, four, four areas, and that is uh, working, traveling, resting, and enjoying. And I've got it for the weekday as well as the weekend, because I'm assuming, in this case, that you're going to be working the five-day week. I know a lot of people don't do that, but just for this example, we'll be doing the five days and the two days of the weekend. So the breakdown is going to be a little bit different. So in this example, we're assuming that you're working about eight hours a day all up, which includes various other things as well. So that could be at work as well as maybe doing some work at home as well. So if you're doing some cleaning and things like that. And I've assigned a utility per hour of just 10. So I've kept it fairly low. I've also got traveling, and I've assumed two hours of travel, one hour there and back. And per hour traveling, maybe you like it slightly more, depending on how you're traveling. You know, you're not going to enjoy being stuck in congestion or you know, in a crowded train and stuff like that. But I'll put it as 15 anyway, for now, just as an example. Then there's resting. So that would be, you know, the time you spend just, you know, sitting back, maybe just sleeping or relaxing or maybe even eating, or whatever one you call us. As a, as a rest period. And also I've got down there as enjoying as well. So amount of time you have to actively enjoy yourself on a weekday. So and I've assigned hours to those. So we've got traveling got as two hours, resting got as ten. So I've got that as your sleeping time and like I say you're just sitting down peacefully time and also got enjoying which is four and that adds up to twenty four hours. It's funny, it never seems to get personally when I was going into the city and coming back and I only found that I actually got four hours enjoyment time anyway or all the 10 hours but it theoretically you should do because if you're working an eight hour day you got the traveling and all but anyway it's you know, just keep that assumption for now so what I've done is I've calculated the total utility so I've got utility per hour so let's say for working that's 10 and I multiplied it by 8 so that gives us 80 and I've done the same for all the other ones so for a work day I calculated you get average utility of about 750 and we call that utils just for the sake of it. Utils, it does vary from person to person, so you can't make comparisons between people. I've also got a weekend day. So the same activities are there again, working, traveling, resting, and enjoying. So I've got traveling is a little bit more enjoyable at the weekend because you're going somewhere you want to go to. You may not necessarily be as rushed as you are on a week, on a weekday. I've got working there as well. You have some housework to do, so I've got that down as for two hours. Kept it as a utility of 10. And I've also got the same as resting, again, kept that the same. Enjoyment, I pumped it up from 60 utils per hour to uh, 80 utils. Why I put more in there? Because the weekend you have more time right, to actually do more things. You've got more options for enjoyment and entertainment than what you might have on a weekday. A weekday is going to be a little bit limited because you don't have the whole day to spare. So I've jacked that up a little bit. And also, depending on what you do, but some of that's probably going to cost you some money as well. So. Uh, again, calculated as the same as I did for the weekday. So the weekend gives you about 1,260 utils over a 24-hour period. So this is just comparing your utility on days that you work and that you don't work. So I've kept the dollars out of this altogether for the time being. So I'll go into the dollars a little bit in my second example. But 
Actually, sorry, that would be the third example when I break down different choices and that would be looking at comparing a day at the park. Was it a day at the park or a day at the lake? Or compared to going to the cinema. So just quickly, um, let's just have a look at an alternative week. So here, this would be more of someone who's a bit of a workaholic. So I've got them down for 12 hours. And I've increased their utility from work to 20. So I've doubled it. So assuming that they really enjoy it. Well, I wouldn't say really enjoy. Reasonably amount of enjoyment out of their work. Travelling's kept it as 15 as before. Resting, I've reduced that from 40 down to 30. Giving them out of work hours and all the additional stress involved with that. So I pulled the utility down. Again, these are just sample values. If you remind you, I'm thinking I actually got this out of any survey. Just to demonstrate uh, my point, I guess, in terms of uh, valuing our time and making the most of our, out of our time. So I've got enjoying as well. I've got that down as well from 60 to 50 in only one hour. It's a one hour enjoyment. And again, I've reduced that simply because less time you have, the less options you have for engaging any enjoyable activity. So I pulled that down as well. Some argue it could be higher because you'd be prioritizing the stuff that you enjoy the most. But for, for a weekday, I've kept that lower anyway. So that's given us a fairly low value of what, 590 per a weekday. So that's someone who works very, very hard. So on a weekend, if you look, I've actually given them a higher number because you've got more money available to do things because of the job and the hours and all that. So you've got enjoyment for um, enjoyment activities up to 90. Again, it does vary from person to person. We're assuming this person is trying to earn money because the activities that they enjoy actually cost them more money. Well, so they say, believe anyway, the activities that they enjoy the most cost them more money. So we're following through with that and giving them an enjoyment of 90. And then the rest of them, I think I've kept pretty much the same. So what that's done is you get an extra 100 utils on the weekend for each weekend day. So it's 200 altogether. But you're losing out, oh, about 160 each weekday. So, so if this, how this example plays out is you'd actually have the person working less hours, earning less money, actually getting more enjoyment in life. Like I said, though, this is just an example, but it's, it's worth looking into how you spend your time and how you value your time and whether you know whether you are working more hours, whether those additional hours are actually really giving you that much enjoyment because you may have the money to do the things you enjoy but if you don't have the time to do it then your quality of life is not going to be there. So it's things you've got to factor. So let's just look at two activities now. We've got two activities, one is a day at the lake and the other one is a cinema and lunch. So looking at a day at the lake as a fairly inexpensive activity so we're going to have things in there again as traveling, uh, enjoyment from food, enjoyment from just the lake experience altogether. But traveling, I've assumed that costs you five dollars, takes about an hour there. So yeah, it'd be half an hour there, half an hour back, just just for the sake of argument. And yeah, five dollars for whatever costs in terms of running your vehicle or transport, or whatever. Also, right, we've got food. I've kept that down to just ten dollars because you're using food from home. So things you've got from the um, your groceries and things. So, some of that stuff, like I said, you may not need to buy in particular for this day out and we just pull it from. So overall cost kept it fairly low. And I've kept the utility reasonably high at 60 because you get to enjoy the whole lake experience, if that's what you enjoy, that is. Again, I say it's different from different people. Um, I've got the experience of the lakes that cost no, uh, no dollars and I've got six hours at the lake. So you've got about 60 utils per hour. So it gives you about 360 utility from that day out. And the total day out, we got it in dollars here of 15. So I've assumed that this person after tax earns exactly $15 an hour. So that is in effect, that costs them one hour of work. So you add up for this experience, the lake experience, that gives us nine hours in total. You got eight hours from the lake experience itself, the one hour traveling, the one hour for enjoying food, and the one hour for enjoying other activities within the lake itself and then plus I've also added the one hour work because that's relevant as well because that's time that you're sacrificing and I've also put the utility you gain from the work as well so assuming you actually gain some enjoyment out of your work some people may not at all but I've got that down as a 20 so that all together in this hypothetical example gives you 460 utils of enjoyment how about the uh, cinema and lunch experience so traveling, I kept that exactly the same, assumed half an hour there, half an hour back. 
Food, I've made it quite a bit more expensive because now you're actually going out, so you'll have to buy your drinks and your food and all of that. And so let's, let's say it could be two people going off, three people, whatever. let's just say two people. So $15 each, that gives you what, uh, $30. The experience itself, so the movie, uh, we could be paying $15 each, for example, for a ticket. And then maybe you're going to spend extra money on drinks and popcorn and all that sort of stuff that you bring in there. So I put that up to $40. I've got it down as a two hour movie. Most of the time, they're longer than two hours. Even the movie may be two hours, but they've got these, all these adverts and trailers and stuff like that. And some people enjoy them, some people don't. Some of the adverts are okay. Trailers are pretty good. You just know what you can go and see next time. Again, it's this promotional sort of thing. But anyway, I've kept that for two, two hours anyway. And I've assumed that it's a good movie. Again, often we don't know, do we, until we actually go in there and watch it. But let's say it's a very good movie, so you've got 80 utils per hour. So that gives us 160 utils for the whole cinema experience. So reasonably good. About in terms of the cost now. So the cost in terms of dollars, that is 5 plus 30 plus 40. So that gives us $75, which is uh, five hours of work if we're working, you know, $15 an hour. I know that's kept fairly low. This will all change around if you're earning a lot more money. But I've kept it at low $15 an hour after tax. So that gives us, um, for convenience purpose, I've kept it at nine hours as well. So you've got four hours for enjoyment, should we say? The, well, traveling, if you're not enjoying traveling, I guess. But So you've got three hours of enjoyment, eating the food and the experience in the cinema. And you've got five hours of working and you've got one hour of traveling. It gives you nine hours. I know you don't do that within one day, but I'm just looking at it in terms of all of time approach, whether it be in the same day or not. So you're going to be sacrificing time elsewhere in order to enjoy that day. So you've got three hours enjoyment out of nine. And for the other activity, we've got, what have we got there? So we've got nine, so we've got seven hours, and maybe take out traveling, one hour for the food. and So yeah, you've got more hours of enjoyment from that. But what is the overall effect? So in terms of work, I've assumed it's again 20 hours, sorry, uh, 20 utilities per hour. So that gives us 100 utils of um, enjoyment from those five hours of work. Plus you've got the 50 and the 160. That's another 210 and that gives us 310 and then in 20 utils of enjoyment from traveling. For the sake of this, I've assumed all activities provide a positive utility value. So things that you really enjoy gives you a lot higher, gives you, let's say, closer to 100, for example, if we're going to take that as a perfect one. Something that we absolutely hate would give us zero, so we assume you don't really hate any of it. So in this scenario, yeah, you could say it's biased. Uh, I've given the day at the lake a higher util value, utility value than the uh, cinema and lunch. But it, it, it's interesting, though, because the actual experience I've still put higher for the cinema, enjoyment of the experience at the cinema. So it, all of this is going to be based on your tastes. And it's quite easy for you to just bypass that whole cost side of it in terms of, you know, you're going to need to work more hours to earn more money to have this enjoyment. Compared to something that, like at the lake, it may give you a little bit less enjoyment, but your sacrifice in order to get that enjoyment is less. And we're basing all off of hours. Rather than trying to confuse things with dollars, and time. So we kept the dollars out of it. You can see I've got zero dollars at the end of it. So I've wiped out all the costs in dollars by in terms of money you earn through working. All right, so what, what's the key thing I'm getting out of this is what I'm trying to present to you is that you need to be aware of what you enjoy and what and what gives you pleasure, what gives you value and what gives you utility. So you got here the chicken, you know, so, so what, you're an idiot? No, you're an idiot, yes. And then you admit, I'm an idiot. It's, it's becoming, you know, self-aware of what you enjoy. And, and a lot of people get caught up with the whole money thing. If you're going to enjoy yourself, you have to spend money. But only to a certain extent. There's a lot of things in life that cost very little and you can get an awful lot out of it. And that also means sacrificing less time doing the things you don't like. And a lot of people don't factor that in how much time they're spending on stuff they don't like in order to get the stuff that they do like. And they're looking at the stuff that they like and not necessarily factor in that sacrifice. And that's one of the big points I wanna try and get out of this video to you today is that you need to focus on both, what you're giving up and what you're getting. I see there's a, a 
a slight flaw with the, the thinking I have here, and that is in terms of jobs and stuff like that. A lot of jobs are fairly inflexible. So you either get a job and it's full time, you're going to commit to the 40 hours, or you get a job that's part time. So you can't just say, hey, I'll work 20 hours this week, I'll work 30 hours next week, and I'll work 10 hours. Generally, jobs aren't like that. So I've got to bear that in mind as well, that when you're working through things that in terms of your 40-hour week, you may not have that flexibility, unfortunately. But with changing times and stuff, I think there are more opportunities you know, for jobs with a little bit more flexible time, especially with the level of technology that we have today. You don't need to commit so much time into actually working. You should be able to get it higher wages. I know a lot of that isn't coming back to the people. It's getting absorbed by the big companies. But... Um, it's just something, if enough people want these flexible working hours, I think that you can actually go ahead and we can get that if people really want it. You've got to push for it. All right, so this now takes me to the end of my uh, video presentation. So I just want to leave you off with this quote from Einstein. I think it's actually quite relevant to some things I've been talking about. So what he says is, a problem can never be solved on the same level of thinking that identified it. So in other words, you can't just focus on the one thing. You need to come at it at another perspective and look at it from another way. And this is what I'm trying to do here. In a sense, I'm trying to move away from the whole money perspective, but look at it in terms of what time is being sacrificed. Because ultimately, that's what you have in life, is time. From the day you're born to the day you die, from zero to whatever age you die at, that is all time. And it, you shouldn't be looking at it in terms of dollars. The dollars can actually help you enhance your time, as I mentioned before. But in order to achieve that, you are making that sacrifice. So I'd like, if anything, if you get anything out of today's video, try and look at it in terms of how your time is used. Okay, thank you very much. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please uh, give me a like. And if you're interested in more videos along similar sort of things, or, or related to other areas of economics, such as, I've got the uh, vegan economics, I've got basic economic concepts. I've also got game theory and I've also got some economic model stuff that, um, that I talk about in a few videos as well. So if you're interested in all those sort of things, please hit the subscribe button. And um, I generally upload my videos on a Monday and a Friday and that's Australia time. So for other countries, you might be seeing them come up on a Sunday and maybe a Thursday, depending on where you're on the world. But anyway, on Australia time, it's it's going to be the Monday and the Friday generally. So I'm going to try and keep as close to that as possible as the days for a video release. But anyway, if, like I said, if you're interested in this stuff, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.